All right, so I've probably explained this over a hundred times across different videos, but I've never actually done a video on the concept of custom mapping your MIDI controllers. And that's probably why I'm still getting comments about it every single day. Today's tutorial is kind of basic. Some of you might already know how to custom map your controller. And also for those of you who are just learning how to do this, this is a pretty universal concept among MIDI controllers in general. I'm gonna be using the DAW Ableton Live today to demonstrate how to do this, but most DAWs have the capability to custom map MIDI controllers. I'm using the Akai MPK Mini today because it is the best blank slate a DAW agnostic controller. It's really not meant for any particular DAW. It just has keys, pads, knobs, some pitch bend and mod stuff over here. It's a blank slate that we can map versus something like the launch key where a lot of Ableton's functions are already baked into that controller. So not as much custom mapping needs to be done, but nonetheless, custom mapping your controller is something that I do for all my performances, basically no matter what controller I'm using. We're gonna be paying some bills with a Skillshare sponsorship today, but I'll talk more about that later. For now, let's open up Ableton and get mapping. So within Ableton, there's a couple important steps that you have to take before you can even start mapping your controller. The first one being we need to go to Live, Preferences, go to Link in MIDI, and let's just talk about this screen for a minute. So what you see here, Control Surface, Input and Output. Under Control Surface, you'll find a drop-down menu that shows a bunch of different controllers listed. This is because companies like Akai or like Novation write particular scripts for their controllers to work within Ableton Live. Meaning that right off the bat, Akai has already taken some effort to give you some sensible mappings for the controller. On the MPK Mini, that means that the eight knobs here will usually automatically map to the eight knobs on your devices. When you see that blue hand there, that means your MIDI controller is in control. And thus the knobs on your controller line up with the knobs on screen. So that's why each of these devices has their own control surface option here. So it's important that we set that first for our controller. And if your controller isn't listed, that means there is no script for it. So you just want to select none at the top. But since we know we're using the MPK mini, we can go ahead and find that. And that will give us the most sensible place to start from, even though we're going to be custom mapping. So my input and output to the controller. Now here's the important part, and we won't be able to map the controller without doing this. Usually by default, the input track will be on. That's good. That's what we want. Sometimes by default, remote will be turned off. Remote is actually what it's going to allow us to custom map this controller. So we need to make sure that that is turned on. Without that turned on, trying to do custom mappings just won't work. So now we're all set up in preferences. And like I said before, it's already got a script for Ableton. So in some respects, it works pretty well. I can play a note and adjust the macros on this synth automatically. I didn't have to map these at all, so that's super useful. And before we get into mapping, let's look at one more MIDI preference that I think you will find helpful. So you notice that this knob right here should correspond to that chorus knob on the screen. The position of this knob is currently at, let's say, 1 o'clock, while the chorus knob is down low at 15%. If I start moving this knob, what you'll notice is that on screen, nothing is happening. I actually need to turn this knob all the way to the position of the knob on screen for it to start taking effect. This is because I have it set to a specific takeover mode. So the takeover mode is called pickup. Without this, as soon as you touch a knob, the parameter on the DAW will jump right to that position and it's usually pretty jarring. So for instance, the crunch knob right here should correspond. It's at 34% on screen, but in real life it's at zero. As soon as I touch this knob, now that I've switched takeover modes, the parameter just jumps. And if you were messing with the sound live or something, it would sound pretty jarring. So we go back to preferences, we go to takeover mode, and we go to pick up. So that helps a lot when you're using your device to control multiple effects across a single project. So if Akai already gave us an Ableton script that takes over these macro controls, why do I need to custom map? 
Well, you might put some different effects or effects across multiple tracks that you might want to always have hand on your controller. So say for instance, I want to drop an effect on this synth. I'll drop a redux onto this synth, a bit crusher essentially. I'll change hard to soft. And you can see the blue hand here, right? Which means that this controller will indeed take it over. So these knobs are now mapped to different parameters on the Redux audio effect. There's my down sample. But as soon as I click off of Redux and I go back to my synth, the blue hand is now on the synth. And that means my knob is back to controlling the synth. It gets even more complicated when you add more instruments to your project and you're off over here in your simpler instrument or over here in your drum rack and you want to still mess with the redux of the synth but you can't because the blue hand which is very convenient at times but if you know exactly what effect you want to be controlling at all times this is why midi mapping is important so let's go ahead and map one of these knobs to permanently be the down sample knob on the synth to do that, I'm going to click MIDI up here in the corner, which will turn everything blue. You notice that all these different parameters turn blue, right? So we have volume meters, pan, basically anything that you can interact with on the screen is MIDI mappable. So we need to click on the parameter that we want to map. So if I go ahead and click this knob, I'm ready to map it. The next thing you need to do is either turn the knob or press the button that you want to control that parameter. So I'm gonna go ahead and assign it to K8 here on the MPK, turn it, and we notice a little value pops up here on the down sample knob. And I also get a list of all my mappings right here in the side view. So we've successfully mapped that. Let's go ahead and turn MIDI off. Now when we turn this knob, we are permanently mapped to that down sample knob. <laughs> And you can see that the blue hand is still on the synth. So no longer are we able to just control this eighth macro with this knob because it's mapped. It's not going to do both at the same time. The other knobs, however, even though we're selected on the synth, will still match up while the knob we mapped remains mapped where we put it. Now there's a couple other really useful ways we can custom map our MIDI controllers, but before we get too deep into that, I wanna tell you about Skillshare, the sponsor for today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives, where millions come together to take their next step in their creative journey. Skillshare's classes are designed for real life, so you can move your creative journey forward no matter your schedule. Understanding a DAW like Ableton Live, in addition to being able to understand music and music theory can be really complicated. But Skillshare has classes with Ableton certified trainers that will teach you music theory with inside Ableton Live. The first 500 of my subscribers to use the link in the description down below will get two free months of a premium membership for Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable at under $10 a month. For me as a music producer and a content creator, building my audience through social media has been really important for my growth, and I've been using Instagram to do that. And if you want to do the same, there's a course with Brendan Wolfel who talks all about Instagram photography and how to make your pictures pop and get more attention, which I think is really useful for music producers that want to leverage social media like I do. So click the link in the description down below and sign up for your two-month free premium membership of Skillshare. All right, let's talk a little bit more about MIDI mapping. So in my performances and with Ableton Live, there are lots of different ways you can use a controller other than just assigning knobs to knobs on screen. Uh, a controller like the Akai MPK Mini doesn't have any clip launching capabilities built into it, but we can actually work our way around that by mapping some of the pads. So I'm gonna push this button CC. So normally these pads would send note data because they usually control a drum rack. But if I press CC, that tells the DAW that, hey, these incoming messages, they're not really supposed to be notes, they're more supposed to be buttons. A couple key mappings that you could use with this CC mode on the Akai MPK Mini is a session record button. So if I click MIDI, again, to go into my MIDI mapping menu, and then I click this session record button here, I can then go ahead and tap one of the pads, let's tap pad eight, and you notice that 
it shows up right there, transport session record. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the MIDI control mode. Press this button. And now it's recording. I can push it again and it'll stop recording and loop a clip. Not only that, but while that loop is playing, if I press this button again, it'll actually go into an overdub mode so you can overdub on top of the loops you've already recorded. And then that's just with the CC mode. So if I turn CC off, I'm now gonna go back to sending note data. So I'd still be able to finger drum with these pads, press the CC button, and then go back to recording a loop. Another important thing to know about these pads, there's two banks on the Akai MPK Mini, bank A and bank B, essentially giving us access to 16 pads that can be mapped. Additionally, there's something called program select. We can think of this as pages. So if we hold down program select and then we press the next pad, we can make entirely new MIDI mappings for this. So if you remember, I mapped this knob to the Redux, but if I start messing with this knob now, I don't see anything happening on screen because we're in a different program. So we could totally remap this program if we wanted to, but for now, I'm gonna stay back in the original program one. So you see eight pads and eight knobs, but obviously it's way more than that. It's deeper, it's pages within, it's multiples of just these controls. Once the controller is mapped, we can also get fancy with the way they behave. So let's actually hard map one of these filters. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back into MIDI mode, click on the filter cutoff, and we are gonna map, uh, let's say K5 to the filter cutoff. We see that we get a new listing for each new mapping we make. And within that listing, it tells us the message that it's receiving to control that parameter. So CC5, CC8, or CC27. It tells you the name of what it's controlling, and then it gives you a min and a max value. We can change these. So let's say I do want to control the filter cutoff, but I never want it to go above, let's say five kilohertz-ish, 5.23, I'm very particular. And I actually don't want it to go that low. I want it to go, I only want it to go about 200 hertz. That'll be the bottom. Now exiting MIDI mode and messing with my knob here will show all the way up is 5.23, all the way down is 233 hertz. So I'm locked in to that range of frequencies. That's really useful, especially for say like volume faders. If you don't want your volume fader to go above zero, you just go into your MIDI map mode and set the maximum for zero. Because a lot of the times, let's say, let's map this one right here. I'll map the first knob to this volume knob. We see that the max is six dB, which means if I crank this knob all the way up, it's going up past zero and it's likely gonna result in some clipping. If instead I go back into MIDI map mode and press zero dB, boom. Then we can crank it all the way down and then fade it all the way back up and all the way back up where it stops on the controller is zero on screen, not maxing out at plus six. You could even have some fun and reverse these values as well. Now I know I showed you how to map that session record to the pads on the controller, but did you know that most controllers with a sustain port actually have the ability to map a pedal. So here I have just your average sustain pedal and I'm gonna plug it into the MPK. It's got some crud on it. So obviously this would usually be on the floor but for the purpose of the demonstration, I'll put it on the table. If I go into my MIDI map mode, I wanna delete that old session record mapping that I did. So I'm gonna click on it, right click on it and hit delete mapping. You can also click on them individually in the list and hit delete. But now, actually let me go out of MIDI map mode because this is important too. Now, if I press this pedal, you see that little light in the top right hand corner? That'll actually happen too if I go in here. It'll happen anytime live receives MIDI from a controller. So that's actually a great troubleshooting point. If you're not seeing stuff light up there and you're pressing buttons on your controller, live is actually not receiving MIDI. But the point being here that 
live is receiving MIDI from the sustain pedal. So that means we can map it just like a button. I clicked on the session record, press the pedal, out of MIDI mode. Now in a new session clip, I press the pedal and I'm able to record a loop. Not only that, but similarly to how it worked with the pad, if I hold down this pedal while it's playing, now I'm in an overdub mode. Release, and I'm out of that. Very similar to some pedal looping techniques that you usually have to get a really expensive loop station for. Now, a couple things before we go. The fact that I have to hold this pedal down, that has to do with the type of MIDI message that Live is sending. And there are multiple types of MIDI messages that can be sent to a DAW meaning that when you press a button, it can have a different behavior. These settings are usually adjustable within the controller's editor. So a lot of these MIDI controllers come with their own editor software that you download from the company who makes the controller that give you access to what actually happens with this controller when it gets into your DAW. What value CC are these different pads sending? Things like that. And within that, it also gives you the type of message that it's gonna send. So experimenting with that within your MIDI controller's software editor can give you different results. But that's really it, a crash course in just basic custom mapping for your MIDI controllers within Ableton Live. Hopefully this means less of this question in the comments, but probably not. But seriously, if you have any other questions, let me know in a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. No, I don't know how to do this in other DAWs because I only use Ableton, I'm sorry. But anyway, if you have a lot more time on your hands these days or if you're stuck at home, take advantage of the two months of free Skillshare. The link is in the description down below and hopefully you all are staying safe out there and you're able to use this time to, you know, be with your loved ones or if you're not able to do that, make some cool art or music. If you haven't yet, make sure you check out my podcast, Tatro Radio. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, go to patreon.com slash Tatro. You can actually get private lessons with me now and access to exclusive live streams, as well as a community discord server where a bunch of home studio producers from around the world chat, support each other, share music, ask for technical help, all that fun stuff. But thank you so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one. Just wanna